Hi Pisces, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I am going to be doing your December 16th to the 31st, 2020 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also to subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload new videos, and I upload all the time, just hit the bell notification button. And if you are interested in any of the cards that I am using, they will all be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from your body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as you enter into the safe and loving space. All right, Pisces. Let's let the bulls sing as we see what the tarot has to say. Pisces. December. 16th to the 31st, 2020 Pisces. December 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 16th to the 31st, 2020 Pisces. Pisces. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Pisces, December 16th to the 31st, 2020, Pisces, Pisces, ooh, okay. Pisces, December 16th to the 31st, 2020, Pisces, Pisces, December 16th to the 31st, 2020, Pisces. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, Pisces. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Pisces. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Pisces. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Fantastic. And let's see what your chakra energy is for this time. Pisces. December 16th to the 31st, 2020 Pisces. December 16th to the 31st, 2020 Pisces. December 16th to the 31st, 2020 Pisces. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. So we're starting off here with divine wisdom, which is the soul star chakra. And then we have flexibility, the sacral chakra. And we have grounding, which is the earth star chakra. On the left-hand side, you have your inner self. The middle is your heart, your emotional self. The right-hand side, the public arena, the public self. So we start off with judgment. Three of swords. Oh, you're judging yourself way too hard. Oh my gosh. Okay. The two of swords. Mm -hmm. And the Ten of Wands. Oh, there's a change coming. I like it. There is a change coming. I like that a lot. 
Eight of Swords, feeling trapped. Mm -hmm. Ten of Swords, darkness before the dawn. The Wheel of Fortune, and then you're handed a gift. Okay, beautiful, 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 beautiful. But you have to be, you have to be mindful. You're, you're hard on yourself here, Pisces. I mean, seriously. The Three of Cups. The Page of Swords, Earth sign, Air sign energy. I do apologize. Air sign energy. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. The Tower, change. The Emperor. You're changing into the emperor. This is Aries energy, time frame, March 21st to April 19th, especially powerful for those of you Pisces who are born on the cusp with Aries. Let's see the people here who are going to be aiding you during this time. Pisces, December 16th to the 31st, 2020 Pisces. December 16th to the 31st, 2020 Pisces. December 16th to the 31st, 2020 Pisces. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. So we start off here with the King of Swords, Air Sign Energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. This is a person who is the king of their existence. It doesn't matter male, female, however they identify themselves. This is a person who rules their lives. This is a person who is stubborn. This is a person who will speak truth even when others do not want to hear it. This is a person who cuts through doubts and fears. And this is a person here, Pisces, that you're going to be very intrigued with because you're going to be sitting there and saying, how is this their truth? Like, how did they get there? And that's going to be a powerful part of you during this time because it's kind of like, how can I get there? How can I move forward like this? And then it brings you to the Sagittarius energy. Time frame is November 22nd to December 21st. This is a person who is astoundingly inquisitive, very much like the air sign energy, wanting to know, gathering up information, very spiritual, very spiritually minded, and asks, oh my gosh, a heck of a lot of questions. They just keep going deeper and deeper and deeper. And that's where you are in your life. You want you want the depth of it. You want the marrow of it. You want the essence of it. And so here with this person, they go deeper. They ask the questions. They pull people in too. They make them kind of feel at home. It's kind of like having a nice warm cup of tea and, and sitting down and chatting. And then you have the King of Pentacles, which is, do you have the King of Pentacles here? I was going to say, which is very powerful within this time. It really is. And I don't know exactly why it is. But there is a sense of moving into prosperity. That could be, that is very much why. And you're seeing the interconnectedness of things that you hadn't seen before. And you're seeking out inspiration in those connections. It's like putting a puzzle together and kind of doing all the edges first. You know, giving yourself a template and then working inwardly. You're going to see that that's what you're doing with your life. It's like, okay, I'm getting the edges down. I'm getting everything set up. And then I'm, I'm moving outward. And then I'm you know, doing more, but it's, you're moving inward because then it's going to the heart and the center of you. It's like, oh, this is it. But it can be that you start at the heart at the center and then you radiate outwards. It depends on, on just how you do it, right? So here you have divine wisdom coming forward with the, with the soul star chakra. You have the sacral chakra coming forward with flexibility and then the grounding of the earth star chakra. So you have six inches above you, which is the divine wisdom which is the soul star chakra six inches below you is the grounding is the earth star chakra so here you're being crowned by wisdom this is why you're seeking deeper this is why you're diving deeper this is why you're being inspired by those who ask questions who give information who see truth in this way or in that way <coughs> excuse me and you're like oh okay i get it oh okay i see it oh okay this this is powerful this is me and you're also going to see things that are you it's like Oh, I stumbled across, yeah, okay, so with the Divine Wisdom, and I know this is going to sound so funny, but with Divine Wisdom, I, I stumbled across something on YouTube, and it was about weight training, right? And it was about how this woman, you know, got really strong, really, really fit through, through weight training, and she didn't look bulky or anything like that, and she says, like, it bar balances your hormones, it does all this stuff, and it's really great, especially as you age, and of course, we're all simply aging, so... I was like, I was super, super intrigued and I started it and I was like, huh, this, this really does have something in a way and made me feel better in a way than I ever had before. And that's going to be stuff that you, you stumble across and you're like, well, let's give it a try. You know, let's give it a try. Let's, you know, let's embrace this way forward. And I had spoken to somebody spiritually about what to do to, to get in better shape and to move forward. And they said weight training. And then I, I stumbled across this person on YouTube and they were so synchronized and I was like, huh, wow. 
that's super cool. That's going to be kind of like the divine wisdom that you get. It doesn't just have to be spiritual. It can help you strengthen your body to move forward spiritually on your path, on your journey, um, in your soul. And that's going to be a very powerful part of you during this time, that, that way that you're just taking things in. And it doesn't have to be as kind of cut and dry as, as that, but it is going to be ways that you're looking at things and you're like, oh, I never thought of that. I never tried that before. Why not? Why not give that a try? And here with the flexibility, this is the sacral chakra. The sacral chakra can tend to be a bit rigid. And we don't want a rigid sacral chakra because our sacral chakra is where we hold a lot of our sexual energy. It's where we hold a lot of our creativity. So if that's stagnant, if that's, you know, it's not oppressed. Because if you're choosing a route of, of self-healing before connection with others, because I do feel that sex is sacred. So I do think that that is a very good route to choose. It doesn't mean stagnant. It can just mean, you know, growth within yourself before you move forward with growth outside of yourself. And so here, no matter what your path is, you still want a flowing, healing sacral chakra. And so here, when you're embracing, sac you're embracing the, the flexibility of the sacral chakra, you are looking at a lot of the stagnation that has been introduced into your life and spoken over your life through negativity, through past life trauma drama, okay, through you know, DNA trauma drama through family curses, you know, that come on, which say, which sound very, very, very intense, but it's kind of like the way your parents were messed up and how they passed up, they passed on that messed upness onto you. And it's like, okay, I need to stop this. I need to now embrace me. And it doesn't have to be your parents. It can be, you know, it can be teachers. It can be, it can be exes that you had that, that hurt you in a way that you were vulnerable to being hurt through through those past life pains, through that DNA pain, through those the, the generational curses that come forward. And so here, it's it's looking at things and it's seeing, I'm seeing like this crystallization and it's kind of like having to break up that crystallization, having to break up those, those knots within the sacral chakra. And it's moving forward. And it can just be meditating with your hands over your sacral chakra and just, just feeling that energy flow within you, feeling that become this kind of like swirling heartbeat of, of power and grace. And it becomes a flexible aspect of yourself. It becomes a way that you move forward and, and see different aspects of your life, different aspects of creativity, different aspects of what you truly desire from your life, where you truly want to be spiritually, personally, and powerfully. And because you are breaking up that crystallization that comes when the sacral chakra becomes stagnant, when you become stagnant, stagnant within the flexibility and the flow of life, you now are freeing yourself and you can feel a tremendous burden lifted off of your shoulders. And it brings you to grounding. It brings you to the roots going deeper. It brings you to looking at the soil that you're planting yourself in. It brings you to looking at the, the fire, the purpose that is guiding you forward. It brings you to so much more than you anticipated and yet so much, so much less than you desire. And that sounds bad because there's always going to be more. It doesn't mean that you're falling short. Short, it means that you are, are sitting there and still being able to move forward towards more. So here with the grounding, you're looking at your roots and the root itself has to be buffered by the wind, right? Because the roots don't grow deeply into the soil of a tree. If they don't have the wind to, to slow down and have the hardening of the bark so that the, the tree doesn't grow, 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 grow super fast and then tumble over. That's kind of like a person. If you Have you ever met a person whose life has been so easy? You look at them and you're like, how did you make it out of like childhood, adolescence, you know, early 20s, you know, without, without any scars? You know, how did, how did you do that? It's, it's astounding. But then they hit something and they just tumble over. They hit failure. They hit disappointment. And they just kind of tumble over. And you're like, oh. Oh, that's how you did it. Or, you know, you could see that person that never really had those really hard times and they're in their 30s, they're in their 40s and they're in their 50s and they just tumble over. And here it's kind of like you're going to want the hardship, the pain, the disappointment that comes with life so that you don't tumble over. So that when the wind hits you, your, your bark is strong. You are strong. You've dug deeply into your soil and you know what you need to nurture you. You know what you need to lift you. You know what you need to guide you forward because you judge your heart, yourself and your heart very, very strongly here, here Pisces. And that's what I'm seeing. It's like, I judge me and I find me wanting, but here's the thing. Divinity is judging you and seeing beauty and grace. There's a balance to this world. You know, that's why we, we have it, our angels and we have our devils and we have, you know, to put everything in its nice little category. 
but there is beauty to the world and then there is also great sorrow and pain and disappointment and we don't know why that happens right there is no rhyme or reason for it but if you believe that that everything happens for a reason and that that reason doesn't have to be okay a happened so that i could solve for b right it means that everything is happening so that on this journey i can become stronger i can become better i can become more right it doesn't excuse and i'm not talking about the horrific but even you could say the horrific but that's more complex here it is looking at life and it's looking at the hardships and the pains and the disappointments, the angers, the upsets, the skin knees, the tearful nights, the, the feeling lost and alone and, and despairing. And it's saying, that doesn't get to be my path. That isn't my only truth. Because we look at our hardships and we think, wow, I'm being judged so poorly. You know, look at how everybody else is looking at me. Here's the thing. You're not running everybody else's race. You're running your own. You're not running everybody else's life. You're running your own. Think of it as a C being the CEO of a company, right? You have to run your existence to be as successful and as productive as, first of all, you want to be, and secondly, as you need to be. And so here as you're moving forward, don't spend time judging yourself. Know that you're being risen up, okay? Know that here, and I'm even seeing the devil. It's like the devil is a corruption of the forest gods of pagan times. So here... When you're thinking that, like, the devil's got you, you could also be seeing that chaos is honing you in a certain way. And that it might not have the outcome, you know, of good that, that the angels desire. You know, the sense of always rising up and always doing the right thing and always being kind of, you know, pure of heart and intention and everything like that. The devil could be a little bit more kind of human, right, in the, in the seeds of chaos. And that those seeds of chaos, they form us in one way or another. It's not truly lowering our energy vibration and saying nothing matters, you know, being very nihilistic, you know, nothing matters, we're all going to die anyway, who the heck cares? It's, it's sitting there and saying, well, I need the chaos and I need the peace. I need the beauty and I need the hardship. And I see that they are guiding me forward in a very specific way. And I look at the hardships and the pains that I've been through and my life isn't meant to solely be focused on these. And yet that's what we do. We sit there and we wrap ourselves in armor, in armor of I'm better than, you know, other people or armor of, you know, nobody will hurt me ever again. We wrap ourselves in armor and we sit there and we think, okay, I can protect myself from being hurt. But we also let ourselves be defined by that hurt. You know, you'll say, what really defines you? And a lot of times you don't hear the person's blessings. Or if you hear the blessings, they're saying it because they think that's what they're supposed to say. But you hear the person's pain. You can, you can see it. You can see it. And so here, it's kind of like what defined me is my pain, my disappointment. If I'm being really honest with you and I'm opening up my soul, this is the pain that made me who I am. This is the reason why I'm broken. And every human being on this planet is broken. To sit there and to say, okay, I might not be whole and perfect, but I'm perfect for me. Like I am, I'm good enough. I am enough. And I will grow and I will evolve and I will change and I will become. And when you first say, I am enough, I remember when I first said that, oh my word, I, I railed against that so much. I was like, this is enough. Like, this is where I want to be. Are you kidding me? Like, this is not enough. This is not what I desire. This is not who I want to be. I was so sad and so desolate a spirit. And I had to come to the point of, I looked at the pain and the disappointment and said, you didn't define me. And I am enough. And that's what you have to say to yourself, Pisces. I am enough. I am enough to look at that pain, that disappointment, that ridicule, that upheaval, that upset, that, that chaos, that, that anger, and to not let it forge me. And No, it did forge you, but to not let it define me anymore. I am not my failures. I am not my disabilities. I am not my heartbreaks. I, I am me. And I learn and give honor to every single aspect of my life that has created me. But I am not defined by that pain anymore. And as you give honor to that life, instead of umbrage, you know, honor, it's saying that helped make me, that helped shape me. You start to see the roads that you had moving forward, the ways that you thought, oh, I, I can move A or B. Like, these are the two ways, and I'm not really keen on either one of them, but, you know, one does have to buck it up and keep on moving forward, right? You start to find that things start to change. You start to see different pathways opening up. You start to see different ways forward opening up. You start to see yourself becoming more of who you are 
and less of who you are, more of your truth, and less of the disguise, you know, less of the, the this is what other people wanted me to be, or this is what everybody expects. It's like, no, this is my reality now. And pathways start to open up. And it's like, you ask yourself, why the heck not? Like, why not try this? Why not do this? Why not push out of my comfort zone? Why not see things differently? Because you're done with being shut down. You're done with carrying so much weight that you cannot soar. Because, my goodness, Pisces, this is a time for you to look at soaring, for you to look at flying, for you to look at the power and the brilliance and the beauty and the prosperity and the abundance that you want within your life and say, oh, I can do this, can't I? I can move forward this way. And it's not sitting there and saying, this doesn't get to be me. You know, it's not sitting there and saying, I'm carrying so much weight. I can barely, barely get my feet off the ground. You know, I can barely move myself forward. This is saying, I'm releasing that. I'm releasing everything I'm carrying for everybody else. I'm releasing the regrets that I have. I'm releasing the failed passion. And I'm looking at where I stand right now. I'm looking at the beauty and the brilliance that is me. And as I embrace this, I embrace me. As I see this, I see my truth. As I move forward, I move forward in my grace and in my existence. And I release what I'm carrying. I release the dreams that I'm carrying that I'm too afraid to let the world see because they'll ridicule them and they'll stomp on my dreams. You know, like Frank Sinatra said, some people get their kicks stomping on their dreams, st stomping on your dreams. And that's exactly it. Some people get a thrill out of it. And yet they never put themselves out there. So who the heck are they to talk? Now it's time. Now it's time to look at the passion that you've been carrying, to look at the brilliance you've been carrying, and instead of letting it tumble you down and shatter you, to release it and to fly, and to see what you can pick up, to see what you can do with the freedom of movement and beauty of you. Because you have the Eight of Swords. You get too much in your own you get too much in your own head. This is the doubts and this is the fear and this is the what if and these are the nightmares and this is the sense that I can't move forward. I can't get to where it is that I need to be. I don't know what it is that I desire. This is, is, this is the trap. And so here with the Eight of Swords, it's like if you can't fly, if you can't fly, if you can't see yourself moving towards your goals, moving towards what you yourself need, Pisces, then it's doubt and it's fear. And that's, that's one of the things because you're born under the moon card. That's one of the things that you really have to be mindful of during this life. You have to be mindful of falling into the realm of fear and letting that spiral you down and down and down. And especially, you know, depending on your rising signs and your, you know, and your moon signs and your chart in and of itself depends on how susceptible you are to that. Also how moon sensitive you are, because you might find that you can feel confined or are astoundingly sensitive or are astoundingly like in your own head as the moon comes forward and then there's a sense of the spotlight coming and the release so here with the eight of swords it's the doubts it's the fears it's the chaos it's the sense that i can't move forward i can't have this path i i am always going to be judged wantingly and negatively and it's like no no that's not my truth at all there's power and there's grace and there's beauty and there's determination and as i move forward i embrace the ten of swords the darkness before the dawn I've bled for this. I've worked for this. I've, I've entered into a new cycle. It's almost a new covenant of being. So here with the, with the eight of wands, this is a sense of your passion. This is a sense of your fire and your purpose. And you might sit there and doubt a lot of it and sit there and say, well, what the heck was it for? And then you have the, the 10 of swords where what comes in is every single lesson that you have learned over a decade or better. You know, every single thing that has, has defined you, that has caused you pain and hardship and, and disappointment, that has taken you out of your comfort zone, that has made you look at things differently. And now you're looking at yourself and what you want. And you're sitting there and you're saying, oh, well, that's why that happened, isn't it? Oh, this is what I'm looking at. Or this is what I'm moving towards. And this is what I want. And this is what I need. And it brings you then to another 10. So now you have three tens, And this is definitely divinity saying that as the darkness comes before the dawn. So does every session in life have its seasons. Every aspect of life has its seasons. And the Wheel of Fortune is within your heart, especially within your mind. You are seeing a shift. You are seeing a shift from a cannot to a can, to a, a failure to a triumph. You know, you're seeing yourself start to look at yourself differently. And that means everything. 
that really does mean everything. So as you look at yourself differently, as you become more empowered, as you become more emboldened, as you see your truth and you see your power and you see your might, you, you start to redefine yourself and redefine who you are, who you want to be, and the way that you're moving forward. And so with the Wheel of Fortune, yes, you feel at times like you're on a roller coaster ride. The highs, the lows, the lefts, the rights, the entering into a new season and having to adjust because you go from the warm weather to the cold weather, from the cold weather to the warm weather, and the body itself has to adjust. And so here you will need an adjustment time. You will need a time of acclimation. But here is also a sense of empowerment, emboldening, a sense of seeing things more, more vividly, more openly, more triumphantly, more, more purposefully. And it's entering that season and saying, this is where I'm supposed to be right now. And it isn't necessarily knowing exactly which season you're entering into all the time. Because you can think that, oh, I'm going to be entering into a summer and you're entering into a winter. And that kind of changes things. But it also has you seeing things so differently, so much more honestly than you would have if you would have been able to prepare for it at every step of the way. Because what's happening is that as the season changes and as your mind changes and the way that you view yourself changes and the words that you speak over yourself change because we either bless or we curse ourselves. That's just what we do as human beings. And we think that our words don't matter. We think, oh, well, what does it matter what I think? You know, who the heck is going to listen to me? You listen to you. And so then you have the ace of wands and the ace of wands is your passion, is your creation, is your determination, is your fire, is your brilliance. And this is divinity handing you this gift and saying, let your fire shine, let your brilliance shine, let you shine through, because it's time. It's time to, instead of hiding your wings, let them, let them fill out, let them surround you. It's like, fly forward, embrace your grace, embrace your soul, embrace your beauty, because it's time for so much more to come than you ever realized. It's time for power and brilliance and truth to lead you forward. And as you do this, it's like, why would you let your fire go out? Once you embrace this fire, which fire changes lives, seriously, fire, the discovery of fire changed the development of man. Because before we had heavier jaws, it's like the Neanderthals, right? They had heavier jaws because they had to grind their food. And to be able to get the nutrients from their food, they had to chew and chew and chew. And that made it so that the jaw was heavier and the cranium was smaller. Because our jaws thinned out, because we developed fire, you know, and we evolved, our craniums became bigger and we became a different species. Different species, a different evolutionary factor of that species, there we go, I don't know. And so here, what you are doing is you are moving yourself forward in that, in that power. It's like it has the power, fire has the power to change lives. The fire of anger, the fire of I'll show you, the fire of passion, it's like this is my calling, the fire of your truth. This is what you are to embrace and this is how you are to move forward because it leads you then to the three of cups and it leads you in the public arena to looking at the people who have cursed you okay and cursing is is a harsh way of saying it but it's also a very truthful way of saying it these are the people who have spoken negativity over you and these were the people who were supposed to celebrate you they were supposed to be your friends they were supposed to be the people who had your back they were supposed to be the people who loved you who cherished you who believed in you over everybody else and they just couldn't it wasn't your fault it was theirs because they couldn't bring that to the table or maybe, you know, this was a friend and you guys outgrew each other, but it was in a very hurtful, very betrayal type of way. And both of you would have different, you know, stories to tell about that. And isn't that so true with a lot of things, but I digress. Here, it is a sense of looking at that pain, looking at that hurt and saying, this is my truth. And instead of, that's what you're going to do though. That's the, the grit, the digressing, there we go. <laughs> Got so caught up, I lost my words for a moment. The digressing is going to be what you do. You sit there and you say, well, you know, I could have been better or I could have been what they needed and I, I contributed to this because you're so deeply feeling, Pisces. You dive deep into everything. You see the shadows of it all. You can see the darkness within yourself. You can see the light. You can see the in-betweens of everything. And so here with the Three of Cups, it's like you see that. You see everything and you'll take the burden on yourself and you'll say, well, I could have done better. You know, I could have been a better, you know, whatever, you know, child partner, friend, student, you'll take that onto yourself. And it's like, stop, stop taking everything onto yourself and look at them, look at them for who they truly are. And not with anger, not with, you know, rage, but almost a bit of pity. 
It's like you couldn't be more, could you? You couldn't embrace more. Bare minimum, you couldn't even give it. And so now it's time for me to move on. Because I've given you enough time. I've given you enough energy. And then the Three of Swords, the Three of Swords, the Three of Cups also shows us here. And it does come with a rather sword-like mentality of, of heartbreak, pain, and disappointment. But it comes with the sense of, you don't get to be the narrative of my heart anymore. You don't get to be the way I define myself. You don't get to be the way I look at myself. You don't get to be that. Because you become a student of your mind. You become a student of your passion. You become a student of your beauty. And you say, this is my grace. This is my power. This is my truth. And this is me moving forward. And nothing will stop me. There's a woeful look in her eyes. It's like, do I have to learn this? Because do I have to learn that life isn't nice? Do I have to learn that sometimes people absolutely stink? Do I have to learn all of this? And the unfortunate thing is that divinity says yes. And that's where the Three of Swords comes in. Okay, there we go. Because it's right here in the reading. So you have a repeat of the number three, which means even through hurt, even through pain, even through disappointment, divinity is with you. And so here, you become a student. You, you learn how to wield the sword. So you learn how to wield the weapon. And you might not want to. It's not your thing. It might not be your forte. But it becomes it. Because it's a necessity. The sword is the only weapon within the tarot. And there's a reason for that. Because the mind is our weapon. We, we have the earth and we can plant it and move it with it. You know, like that. Fire can be a weapon too. Our passion most definitely. Our water, water can also. But the one that takes skill. That takes honing. That is the way of, of royalty is the sword. Only nobility could carry a sword in the Middle Ages. It was a sign, and, it, and before that, most definitely, it was a sign of power. It was a sign of grace. It was a sign of, of triumph. And it was passed down from generation to generation and worn and, and carried with pride. And that is what the mind is. Passed down from generation to generation as, as one generation teaches the other, teaches the other. And it should be a form of pride. This is what I know. This is my sacred truth. This is my power. This is my brilliance. And so here you embrace that. You embrace that knowledge, that sacred truth, that power, that, that prosperity. You cut through the doubts, the fears, the angers, the upsets, the upheavals. And you say, this is where I stand. And this is what I stand for. This is who I am. This is what I see. And this is what you're doing in the public arena. It's because you've been pushed out of your comfort zone. The tower is divinity saying, ready or not, here it comes. Now, this could be for 16 days. This could be for 16 years. This could be for you know 16 months. Of course, 16 months should have come in the middle of all that. But this is looking at things. And this is saying, enough is enough. This could be since you were 16. You know, life started to change and you just looked at it and you're like, oh my goodness, why? Why did you take me on this ride? Why, why am I doing this? Why am I here? You know, why is all of this happening? Because you're going to see that roads that you hadn't thought of start to open power that you didn't know you had, you start to embrace that season. You start, you start to embrace that new dawn. And so things have crumbled. Yes, they have. Like Humpty Dumpty, all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put it back together again. Never in that nursery rhyme do they say Humpty Dumpty is an ache. Humpty Dumpty is us. And through force and through power, you cannot demand a person get well. You cannot demand them to put themselves back together again. You just can't. You can't force it. You can't demand it. That's not how life works. And yet, that's how we think life works. It's like, if I just force it, if I just demand it, it will be. No. This is sitting there and honoring the pain that you have been through. And it sounds so silly to honor pain, but it needs to be done. It needs, it needs to be something that isn't a dirty little secret. That you have pain and suffering and sorrow and heartbreak and disappointment. It needs to be something that is seen. Something that is addressed. Because here, as you move forward, you need to move forward in a greater grace. Because divinity has pushed you out of your comfort zone for a reason. Because you are a warrior. Excuse me. And Pisces, for you to embrace that warrior spirit, it's never easy. It's never something that comes natural to you. All right? But once you embrace it, you're never going to back down from it. This is always going to be the road that you take. This, the, the fact that you are the warrior king and kindness is the way that you judge your weapon is the way that you judge yourself. And Aries energy, which is what the emperor is, okay? Aries is, is the warrior god of ancient Greece. 
And that's what you're looking at here. You're embracing the throne of your life and of yourself, of what you desire, of what you need, of how you're moving forward. And you're saying, I am the warrior king of my destiny, of myself. I claim this throne, not because you're the best person to rule, but because nobody else has the right to rule over you. And so in the public arena, there is this shift and people can look at it a little bit dumbfounded because you're stepping out of darkness into light. You're stepping out of doubt into a shorty. You're stepping into the power that you were born to. And that, that is odd. Okay, people will sit there and be like, well, what the heck happened to, to Pisces? But that, that is powerful. That is your new dawn. That is your destiny. That is where you were supposed to be standing for so long. And there's going to be a part of you that then gets mad at yourself for taking this long. Stop it. Each flower blooms in their own time. Each person learns their own way. So let's go deeper. Pisces. December 16th to 31st, 2020 Pisces. December 16th to 31st, 2020 Pisces. December 16th to 31st, 2020 Pisces. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels ooh, and spirit guides, fantastic. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly, guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Ooh, goodness. These would be your bonus cards. Awesome. So let's see the people who you need to be mindful of during this time. Who are the people that Pisces needs to be mindful of? December 16th to the 31st, 2020 Pisces. December 16th to the 31st, 2020 Pisces. Who are the people Pisces needs to be mindful of? December 16th to the 31st, 2020 Pisces. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, fantastic. We have here, we have the Hierophant, okay? This is Taurus energy, April 20th to May 20th. This is somebody who's just very stubborn, very, very stubborn, bullheaded, you know, sits there, sees it their way, their way is right. And you have to not let their voice, Pisces, overpower your own because it's like, no, 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 no. You don't get that right. And then we have the Queen of Pentacles, Earth sign energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. This is somebody who is very grounded a certain way, who sees things very much a certain way. And this is going to be a person who you just don't vibe with during this time. It's like your energy and their energy just don't match. And that's okay. That's okay. They're saying some valuable things. It can be that right now is not the time that you need to hear them because their deliverance is, is terrible. Their delivery is terrible. But it can also be that it's just not the right time. It's not the right time for that message, that way to move forward. And you need to step back a little bit. And then we have the Queen of Swords, Air Sign Energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. This is a person who is blunt, cutting into the point. It's very interesting. You have a very positive King of Swords, a negative Queen of Swords. And this can be somebody who uses kind of emotional manipulation as their thing. Also very kind of gossipy at times, very much likes to be in their element and likes to knock people off their footing in, in, in their own element. So just be mindful of that. They'll kind of maneuver the conversation so that they're super comfortable or they come out super smart and, and powerful. And you're sitting there and you're like, you know, I know nothing about this. Why would you even like, why would you do this? That type of thing. And if you're being inspired by this person, or if you found this person through one form of media or another, they kind of just head in a direction that just, you're not willing to go. You don't want to go. So we have the Eight of Pentacles, the Ace of Wands, the Ten of Pentacles, which is beautiful, another beautiful ten, and the Nine 
of Swords, the, two, the Six of Cups, the Four of Swords, the Seven of Swords, the Queen of Pentacles, and the Knight of Pentacles. You're definitely defending your, your true prosperity. The Seven of Pentacles, Patience. And the six of swords reverse. You can you have patience you need to have patience because you don't feel like you're moving forward the way that you should. You're but you are. You know, you just you just don't see it yet. So everything is building up and you, you want to know when your hard work will pay off because you're judging yourself so harshly that you're thinking, Well, it's all just been for nothing. It's all just been a big waste of space and I can't believe I did this and you have to stop. You have to stop being so hard on yourself because you'll take away all your blessings. And that for you, Pisces, I mean that for anybody is an absolute shame. But for you, especially, with all the beauty that you have to offer, with all the intricacy of soul that you obtain, I mean, that would be, that would be terrible. The Ace of Wands, God, Source, Spirit, however you see the divine, the universe, handing you a gift, a passion, a power. I mean, you're rooted in this gift of the Ace of Wands. Now it's at the center of you, in your inner self, this gift of creation, this gift of of passion it can also be this increase in sexual and creative energy that's moving you forward that's opening up roads for you and then the kind of being shot out of the sky the holding too much weight the holding on too too much you know now has brought you to looking at your prosperity to looking at your bounty that lasts for generations differently and it's calling it into your life it's calling wealth or what you value as much as money into your life into your soul into yourself and then it brings you to the nine of swords because here, it's so interesting because you have the Nine of Swords, Eight and Ten. So you have Eight, Nine, and Ten here. This is this progression within the mind. And it's all about feeling trapped. Getting out of your own head is going to be paramount to you moving forward. Because there's a sense here of as this change is happening, as you're entering into a new season, you're thinking about all the ways you messed up. All the ways in the past that you messed up or how it was better in the past and you wish you can go back. It's like, okay, stop. Stop looking backwards. Stop doubting yourself every second of the way. Just create. It might be garbage as you're creating. You might sit there and be like, wow, whose truth is this? Like, you know, what is this nonsense? But as you keep on pushing through, as you keep on soldiering forward, you're going to find that what you once thought was nonsense really is quite beautiful. Really is quite beautiful. And you enter into a new season of that beauty. As you take this gift of prosperity, give honor, pay homage to all the pain all the hardship, all the disappointment that you have been through and stop letting it define you so much. Embrace your grace. Embrace your power. Embrace your brilliance. Not even defining you so much. Stop letting it be what you immediately think of when you think of yourself because it's going to be the failure. It's going to be the pain. It's going to be the disappointment. And divinity is sitting here and it's like, enough is enough. Everything that you have been through has made you stronger, has made you more than what you have anticipated. Okay, it can make you more than what you wanted to be, most definitely. But you are now armed with a weapon that nobody sees. And you move forward in that truth as you leave behind the past and as you embrace being a student of your present. And it brings you to prosperity. If everything didn't crumble, you would not rise in this way. You wouldn't, ever. And so here you embrace that prosperity. You embrace that bounty. You walk forward silently but stealthily in your truth in your power and you defend that prosperity because you are the ruler of your destiny you are the might of your right right and so slowly and steadily you build and you know that things happen in the divine timing not in your timing which is really frustrating i always find divine timing to be frustrating but it's so much more rewarding and you are moving forward just not in the way that you anticipated. And you can feel stagnant at times because it is divine timing, not our timing. And that is a powerful truth. Let's see what your spirit animals have to say. Pisces, December 16th to the 31st, 2020 Pisces. December 16th to the 31st, 2020 Pisces. December 16th to the 31st, 2020 Pisces. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, 
Fantastic. The sea turtle spirit, the turtle spirit. Slow and steady wins the race, seriously. We think it's when you get there. We think it's how people can ooh and ah over us. But slowly and steadily, building something that is unbreakable. Building a you that is unbreakable. That's a win. That is a profound and brilliant win. It then leads you to the dove spirit. Be peace. Be at peace within your soul. Be, you know that old saying, be the peace you want to see in the world? Be that peace. Let peace guide you. Let peace be with you. Make peace your objective in life. How can I live a peaceful, beautiful existence? How can I embrace my grace and my happiness? It then brings you to the panther spirit. It says, claim your power. Because for too long, Pisces, it has gone unclaimed. Claim your power. Your subconscious spirit animal message is the whale spirit. Trust the great mystery. Trust the great mystery that is you. Trust the great mystery that is this world. Don't try to have all the answers. Know that having questions and letting those questions guide you is more than enough. It then moves you to your subconscious chakra message, which is holistic health. Holistic health. There we go. Embracing the health, the power, the assurity of you of sitting there and saying, what is it that I need to heal? How is it that I move forward? This is your root chakra. How is it that you move forward and heal at your root, at your very power, at your very existence? What is your truth? Who is the holistic you? Your subconscious person message is the star card, is the Aquarius, is Aquarius energy. Now, this is January 20th to February 18th, so you can be born on the cusp of Aquarius. But this is a sense of the healing waters coming forward, the sense of healing and power and beauty being a part of you, of you looking at the greatest form of man's perfection, and you seeking that, that perfect truth, that powerful grace, that awing wonder, and knowing that divinity sees you and is granting your greatest wish. You might not even know what your greatest wish is because this is the wish of your soul, not the ones we cross our fingers over. Your subconscious tarot message is the Four of Swords. Give homage to all the pain that you have been through. Don't try to push it away. Don't say it doesn't matter. It is going to shape the way that you move forward so beautifully and so profoundly especially if you're an artist, okay? You will be able to layer this into your work, but you have to give homage to it, to the path that you've been on, to the journey that has made you you. It is not a curse, it is a blessing. You are a blessing. To go deeper into your subconscious, we have the Knight of Cups, we have you. You are the Knight. You are the defender of your heart. And subconsciously, you move forward, defending what is most precious to you and knowing and embracing your tremendous and astounding power. All right, Pisces. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we judge ourselves, not on how quickly we've finished the race or how much we have achieved, but the quality of that achievement, the beauty of our souls, the power of ourselves as we move forward in grace and in beauty as we move forward slowly and steadily into the peace of our power. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you.
May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Pisces.